Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, August 7th, 2023. Let's get into it. So I want to start with the most recent news first. Uh, we had uh, a flotilla, I, I called it an armada, it was far from an armada. I've, been, I've heard anywhere from 11 to 14 ships. I have not seen any video, even on Twitter, of the uh, Russian and Chinese navy, naval ships that came up the uh, coast of Alaska. But I wanted to give you my analysis on that because nobody seems to have analyzed that properly. Number one was the total lack of United States uh, response to that. I think there was a couple of destroyers and maybe even a couple of helicopters that took off. Well, guess what? That's because we projected our power over on the other side of the world. We don't have any Navy left here in the United States. And I think if you want to look at the geopolitical message is that Russia and China were trying to send to the United States is, number one, we can hit you at home. You know, we're not just parked over here on the other side of the planet. We can come over to your side of the planet and hit you if we want to. So that was the first message, and I think they were trying to make that known to the American people. Hey, all your military is in 144 bases all around the world. What are you going to do when uh, we want to come in and, uh, and, and blow up the United States, which was already going to happen when the drug cartels come across. They already got the javelins. We know that. So I think that was a huge uh, message. They were trying to tell the United States, you know what? You want to come over here and play in our backyard. We can play in your backyard, too. Okay, let's watch a video of the Russians and the Chinese uh, playing together in the sea. So I know this uh, footage is probably copyrighted, and I couldn't find any footage showing the, uh, I don't know if you knew, but uh, the Russia and Chinese just floated an armada <laughs> of ships right up the Alaska coast there, and it was quite impressive. I was like, holy shit, I haven't seen anything since this, like this armada since World War II, except in uh, the United States Empire. But let's watch this. This is just a drill of Chinese and uh, Navy. They're practicing search and destruction of, uh, of mock. I believe this is anti-submarine warfare. If you watch these, I think these are uh, um, uh, bombs that they're, they're launching in to the ocean to, to fight off uh, submarines. Quite impressive. Now, wasn't that interesting? Hmm. They, I guess, uh, do you fear that, Navy? I don't know. China's building a hell of a lot of ships, a lot more than we can. So then I wanted to get into the next uh, clip, and this is probably the most badass clip I've seen. And this is a message to the thousand troops that the United States has, still has stealing the oil out of Syria. And, you know, I wonder, I, I, I've always wondered why there's all of these, these, this video on Russian television, uh, and they're, my belief, my analysis of all this is they're sending a message. They're trying to do it in a friendly fashion, but all these videos, everything I show you, these are messages to the American people and to the United States uh, Imperial or the Empire, the United States Empire, specifically the warmongering Democrats. And so why would they put a video out like this Unless they're saying, look, you know, you can leave peacefully from Syria or check this out. So this is a video that uh, Russia threw up about a joint military exercise. We used to conduct these in the United States. I don't think that the U.S. troops are getting this type of training, uh, but 
you know, I do think that this video is a message to the United States from Syria and Russia. Maybe you want to reconsider your thousand troops stealing our oil, because uh, I think we're coming for you. Wasn't that amazing? Oh my god, I watched that and I was like, damn. What are a thousand American troops going to do against that? I mean, I'm surprised they just haven't gone in there and wiped them out. I mean, I hate to say that. I'm an American. I don't want them to die. But damn it, you warmongering fools. Get the hell out. Sooner or later, I mean, whether it's uh, ISIS funded by uh, Russia and Syria, or because I'm sure they don't want to go in, uh, you know, themselves but you know they can always hide their troops in and make it look like uh, uh, isis or al-qaeda or whoever is attacking the base i don't know so then you know of course we got what's going on in niger so once again the u.s empire you know what do we got i mean other than this we exploit africa of course for all their natural resources but the french are the worst about it and uh, it looks like the French, uh, by the way, I saw that Victoria Newland, uh, she went over there to meet with the rebels in Niger. Boy, I wish that woman good luck. I, what, is, what is her role? I mean, you'd think she was the president of the United States. She just seems to kind of appear in every uh, uh, conflict uh, and, and just, uh, she's the, the, the biggest warmonger and neocon I've ever seen in my life. And how in the world she ended up in Niger, I have no idea. I mean, where did the, I'm, of course, I, I can't, and by the way, the uh, Nigerian president, the new president, uh, he said, uh, no, he's, he's not even going to talk to her. So anyway, this was an interesting factoid. Um, we've got, uh, by the way, I didn't have any video from Africa other than protests. And uh, so this is part of my theme of Africa on fire. This is the Democratic Republic of Congo. You probably haven't even heard about this in the news, have you? <laughs>
My question to uh, everybody is what are the military capabilities of the African nations that uh, are coming up against the colonial West? Uh, are they capable of um, uh, joint military maneuvers? Are they capable of um, combined armed forces? And these are questions, and where is Wagner? Where is Wagner? Uh, nobody seems to be able to answer these questions. I'm not getting anything out of, um, well, a lot of, uh, uh, I don't want to call them out, but there's a lot of people I follow on Twitter that I think are pretty knowledgeable about Africa. I don't know a damn thing about Africa. I didn't even, hell, I, didn't, I hadn't even looked at Africa until this whole thing took place. And now, now it's a whole new geopolitical, uh, so you see how spread out we're getting. We've got Russian China ships off of Alaska. We've got the situation in Syria. I haven't even talked about North Korea. Uh, I tell you what, they, that's, uh, that's going to be a huge. Russia, uh, well, you know, Lazarov, he was just over there and they were meeting and talking about things. Uh, we might have things that kick off there with South, South Korea. We got 30,000, what, 30,000 troops in South Korea? We've got troops everywhere in the world except the United States. That's it. All right, let's just keep going. So we'll, we'll get into, uh, by the way, so the, the uh, you know, the, if you want to know about how good the sanctions are working, uh, Russia now is the wealthiest country in Europe. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that blew my mind. I, I knew, well, they, you know, we know they got all the natural resources, but unless you can sell them and, and make a profit, but they are now the, the, the uh, number five uh, biggest GDP in the world, and they are the wealthiest country in Europe. So that was uh, that was pretty good. I tell you what, um, I, I'm a huge, huge fan of Colonel Douglas McGregor, and uh, he just came out with an op-ed called Make Peace, You Fools. Make Peace, You Fools. Uh, try to look that up. I, I haven't read it, but uh, I'm sure it's very good. I just watch him on all the YouTube channels. And then, of course, he came out and... Uh, I want to make a meme out of this. If you're watching this video, maybe you know somebody that makes memes. And uh, he said, um, gold is like garlic to a vampire. <laughs> I just thought that was it. Because he was talking about the fact that the, uh, and we're, hey, let's get into that right now. So this is, uh, he was talking about bricks. And, uh, and these, if the new currency does come out, well, I guess August 22nd is the big day coming up here shortly, huh? But uh, this, this person, uh, this is called Russian Market. Uh, I follow them on Twitter. And they put out this list. And it says, countries that have a desire to join BRICS. And I'm just going to try to read these as really fast as I can. Hope I don't mispronounce any of these. Algeria, Argentina, Bangladesh, bah Bahrain, Belarus, Bolivia, Venezuela, Vietnam, Guinea, Greece, Honduras, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Cuba, Kuwait. Morocco, Mexico, Nigeria, UAE, Tajikistan, Thailand, Tunisia, Turkey, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Ethiopia. You don't think it's becoming a bipolar world? I had somebody arguing with me about that on a, a conference that I was in. And they, they said, oh, you mentioned bipolar world. And they booted me right out. I was like, oh, God, I didn't know that mentioning bipolar world would just get you booted right out of the conference. By the way, I got this um, right here. Uh, what is six dollars for a dozen eggs today? No, there's no inflation. No, 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 no inflation whatsoever. Uh, oh, I made a joke. I tell you what, wouldn't it be great? Because uh, I, I got a tweet. Now, I don't know if he was over there. I haven't seen any video about it. But the Chris Christie, I think, visited uh, Zelensky in Ukraine here recently, and I said, well, wouldn't it be great if we could send him to the front lines, uh, you know, in the war there, because his great bulk would act as a shield for all of the Ukrainian troops. Hell, he might just win the war for Ukraine because all that Russian fire couldn't get through that bulk. And then, of course, I said, well, maybe we can add Bill Barr to that mix. <laughs> Between the two of them, it'd be like two uh, elephants uh, charging into the uh, Russian forces. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe that's uh, that would be a good thing. So, um, all right. I'm going to finish off this video with... And this is another thing that I'm, I know that the Russians, they're trying to send a message. On RT or on uh, Russia Ukraine updates or whatever channel you want to watch it, any of the Russian uh, people that are on Rumble, um, you can you can get a lot of video where the Russians they film their equipment quite often, and I think what they're trying to do is they're sending a message. They're trying to send a message to Europe, the United and the United States Empire, saying, "Okay, you want to you want to battle us? Let's show you what we're doing to Ukraine. Let's look at the gods of war in action." What video would be complete without showing off the Russian gods of war? Не во выстрел! 
So what I found so awesome about this video, and I'm not going to play the whole thing, just a couple seconds, I just want you as an American citizen or whoever's watching this video, can you picture that trader Austin or Millie doing something like this? Man, was that unbelievable or what? We'll finish the video right there. I'm going to be making some other videos. So I wanted to add one more thing to the video. I meant to talk about this because they talk about my other videos. Is uh, I've got all of the footage from the uh, tank battle that took place, like the Ghost of Kiev. And uh, I'm going to be putting that up as a separate video. I'm not going to go into any details about that video. I, I'm not sure YouTube's going to let me put it up. It is quite graphic, although you don't really see uh, any dead bodies or anything. Well, of course, there, there's definitely dead bodies in the video. And uh, it's gonna, this will be an 18 and up uh, video, that, but you can find it on The Burn. The Burn on Rumble. Uh, I'll attempt to put it up on YouTube. We'll see if they, they take it or not. Uh, but, but the thing is, there's a lot, I'm going to warn you, there's a lot of foul language in this video. I mean, every other word that the Russians are speaking <laughs> is, is the F-bomb and this F-bomb and that F-bomb. I mean, I was just, I, I mean, I, it was, I, I don't want to say I was laughing. I was just kind of like, man, you know, I... Is that what it was like when I was in war? I guess it was, because we just cussed about everything. And that's why, you know, military, when you come back and you woke, work for these woke corporations. I remember one time I got called up uh, just for saying the F-bomb because I, I dropped something on my foot. And, uh, and boy, I got called into the president of the company. He says, you can't use that type of language in our corporation. That was J.P. Morgan Chase, by the way. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, 
that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.